Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Stovall. I'm a graduate of the New College of Florida from the cohort of 2006 and I think it is not a hyperbole to say that I am blessed to have been a student of Steve Miles. Um, I arrived at New College to study music with a certain degree of uh, insecurity. I was a, a young classically trained violinist um, who secretly wanted nothing more than to be in a rock band. Um, and I, I knew that I wanted a liberal arts education in music, um, but I just wasn't sure if, if I could really call myself a real musician um, had I not attended a conservatory or spent eight hours in the practice room every day. Um, but from our very first meeting, um, Steve encouraged me to find and to fashion my own way in my music studies. Um, and he was really, he was not at all concerned when I uh, took some time off from New College to, to tour with a rock band. And, and I came back um, from that energized and focused and I had planted in me the seeds of a thesis project that essentially um, was an arena for artists to find and fashion their own performances that are unique and uniquely meaningful and, and expressive of themselves. Um, studying with Steve set me up to lead a life that is ensouled by music more than uh, more than I could have imagined before I came to New College. Um, whether I'm playing in in my bands or in, even in working communi in communications for the Sarasota Orchestra, I am so appreciative of what I gained in Steve's classrooms. That open-mindedness, that curiosity, and that that dogged pursuit of meaning and meaningful experiences. Um, and I feel like every day I'm finding ways, consciously or unconsciously, to dissolve those those boundaries and those barriers between art and existence. And that is truly a delightful way of being. So. I know that my story is not an isolated one um, among Steve's students, and I am so glad for the opportunity to, to share it um, with you all today as we pay tribute to an incredible artist, a wonderful mentor and educator and inspirer of other artists. Steve has a long-standing interest in the intersection between speech and music. Much of his own creative output explores this intersection, and some of the first concerts of New Music New College also probe similar explorations of music and language, such as The Songbooks by John Cage, or a concert aptly titled Speech Acts. Given this, I thought I would perform a performance poem that I wrote that's called Why We Don't Have Earlids. We can't close our ears. Have you ever wondered why we don't have earlids? Between sleeping and blinking and flirtatious winking, I was thinking that half of our day lacks visual stimuli. Our eyes can't always size up. But listen up. Listen up. Listen up. You often hear that humans are visual creatures, but maybe we listen up because listening is a higher form of attending. Maybe humans don't have earlids because we are auditory creatures, and that listening to each other is an essential definitive feature of our nature. But there's a nomenclature that appears between to listen and to hear, and I fear we don't listen enough. Leaders should have vision, but make a decision, go on a mission, create the conditions and provisions to also listen. It's a decision of not just erudition and not merely the ambition of us musicians, but a method for the remission of friction and to develop intuition. So listen up. Don't just hear. Listen with both ears wide open. Open to ideas, open to ideas from your elders and from the youth, because they speak the truth. Listen with both ears wide open to the ideas from the chastised and disenfranchised and from those not deemed civilized. We don't have earlids, so listen to the ideas from your mentors, 
Establish your mentors and cherish their merits. For in the void of winter, mentors will be the calm voice of hope and inspiration and direction and reflection and circumspection to battle depression. Maintain multiple mentors and listen to them. Listen to the world around you with lingering love, lushly, lavishly, but with lenience, like a leader. Liberty was his name. Liberty was his real name. And Liberty was my friend. Liberty listened. It was at a jack-in-the-box. The crank turned, a moment of shock. Late night eats, a walk across the street. A white Dodge Ram drives through the drive through Liberty tries to dodge, but the Dodge rams into Liberty. Three friends sit in the truck. They struck down Liberty. Now they ponder their next move. Move. They say, they drive away, a hit and run, fled the scene, they don't hear Liberty, deaf to his screams. Liberty was caught in the undercarriage and was dragged. He was found dead in the middle of the road. The driver didn't listen to his conscience. The driver didn't listen to his heart, and Liberty was the victim. Had the driver stopped, taken responsibility, not tried to run, listened to his heart, Liberty would still be alive. Perhaps it's not coincidence that you can't spell heart without the word here. You can't spell heart without the word here. So listen to your heart. Listen up. Listen up. To listen is to have access to what is invisible to the eye. Sometimes you need to listen to the outside world, but sometimes you need to listen to your inside world. Then, when you stand on the crossroads, you'll know the codes that your heart bestows to sow and grow the seeds that your heart needs to remain aglow when all is low and seems hollow. So listen up. Listen to your elders and the youth, because they speak the truth, and from your teachers with all their eccentric features. Listen with both ears wide open to the ideas from the chastised and disenfranchised, and from those not deemed civilized. We don't have earlids. So listen to the ideas from your kids and from your wife, because they know what's right. Listen to what your mentors and friends say and all that their ideas convey. Go, breathe it in the ear of all who doubt and fear that to listen to your conscience and stay honest is the way to reach humanity's promise. So listen up, listen up. Hi, Steve. Excited to see you for your retirement party. I just wanted to say how grateful I am to have had you as a foundational teacher, mentor, and inspiration. Your wisdom and passion for music has always stayed with me throughout my creative processes and artistic career. No matter what form of art medium I work with, I still think about it in terms of ways to integrate musical practices, thanks to you. I wish you the best during your retirement and I look forward to the day to when we can safely have a coffee together. Take hey everyone. My name is Silas DeRocher. I graduated New College in 2007 with a degree in music composition. Steve was my teacher, my professor, my academic advisor, my mentor, and my friend. 
I was always so impressed with Steve's knowledge of music and theory and so much more. The way he can just hear a composition from reading the score. He seems to know everything from Baroque counterpoint to rock, from Gregorian chant to the avant-garde, from Stravinsky to Bach. But I was always most impressed with Steve as an educator, a teacher, an inspirer, a gifted motivator, an insightful guide always on hand with the perfect lesson and a personalized plan. His infectious enthusiasm had us all wrapped in our seats, even in 9 a.m. classes when I was still half asleep. At such a small college, one professor can change everything. They can make the school work for you. They can make it inspiring. I'm so lucky I wound up with a mentor who got me, who let me compose funk symphonies, but who also taught me the fundamentals, the theory, the necessary foundation of a well-rounded liberal arts music education. And everything I learned from Steve, I still regularly use it. Okay, maybe not so much the experimental vocal music, but it all serves me, it all gives me fuel. So thank you, Professor Miles, for expanding my creative tools. Cheers to your retirement, and congratulations, Steve. We're all so happy for you, but so sad to see you leave. <laughs>